Hello and welcome to the presentation, Saving Legume Seeds. This is an abbreviated version of one of our monthly webinar broadcasts. At Seed Savers Exchange, our mission is to conserve and promote America's culturally diverse but endangered garden and food crop heritage for future generations by collecting, growing, and sharing heirloom seeds and plants. And tonight is all about beans uh, and peas. We're going to be covering some pretty general information about saving seeds from the Fabaceae family, including common beans, which might be pole or bush beans, dry or green beans, uh, all members of the Phaseolus vulgaris species, and peas, soup, snap, snow or shelling peas, and the seed harvesting and cleaning techniques that I'll describe will also be applicable to limas, cow peas, favas, which are growing for the first time here in the display gardens at Heritage Farm, runners like painted lady or scarlet, and soybeans or edamame. When you're growing beans for seeds or food or both, it is important to provide your plants with the proper support. Uh, while bush beans and soybeans might only grow a couple feet tall, runner beans and pole beans require a trellis to support their climbing habit. This keeps pods happy and healthy up off the ground where air can circulate and away from soil borne pests and diseases and healthy plants will produce healthy seeds. Beans and peas in particular are great crops for beginner seed savers. They're fairly easy to grow. And if you're growing soup peas or dry beans, you're already familiar with growing plants to seed maturity. Uh, a little bit more on that later. Beans and peas are also inclined to self-pollinate as a result of their flower structure. Pictured here are a pair of pea flowers, which look uh, pretty darn similar to bean flowers. And the flower on the left, notice the two dark red wing petals. Uh, I've removed these petals from the flower on the right to expose a structure called the keel. Uh, which protects the reproductive organs of that flower from pollen and from pollinators. Notice the pistils and stamens after the keel is removed. It's most likely that pollination is going to occur between these organs hidden behind the keel. As primarily self-pollinated plants, beans and peas can be planted somewhat close to other beans and peas without much concern for cross-pollination and mixed up seeds. Cross-pollination in the bean family can only occur between plants in the same species. So peas can pollinate other peas, but not cow peas. Limas can pollinate other limas, but not favas. For beans or peas, you can probably space different varieties within a species 10 feet apart for uncrossed seeds. Keep in mind, however, that the farther you can plant different varieties within the same species, the more reliably those seeds will grow up to look, taste, and grow like their parents. You can also use blossom bags slipped over the flowers before they open and removed right after the pods start to form to prevent cross-pollination. Um, this is hardly necessary except when you've got particularly aggressive pollinators in your garden. After pollination, the flower petals fall off to reveal a tiny, immature pod that will continue to grow and develop along with the seeds inside. The seeds are immature for some time during bean and pea fruit development. In the green eating stage of a bean, for example, the seeds aren't noticeable when you bite into the pod. This is a great stage for eating, but a really poor stage for seed saving. Even when the seeds have plumped up to the shelling stage of a bean, I think like edamame, they still aren't ready to harvest and store for next year's planting season. The seeds should be rock hard when harvested for future planting, and the pods should be dry and brittle. Pods might even start to split open at this point. If you can't dent the seeds with your fingernail, the pods are ready to pick off the vine. This is the time to harvest soup peas or dry beans for storage and eating as well. Less ideally, whole plants can be pulled up from the ground and hung upside down while the seeds finish maturing if the weather is particularly wet that fall. Once the pods and seeds have been picked, the next step is to separate the seeds from the pods and clean them of dirt and debris. Though this can be done by splitting the pods open by hand, threshing and winnowing can greatly speed the process. Threshing involves applying some amount of force to the pods to liberate the seeds. We like to stomp around on a pillowcase full of pods and seeds. The seeds will naturally settle to the bottom of the bag, uh, or in this photo, the container we poured the seeds into, allowing you to remove most of the pods sitting on top. Winnowing uses an air current to blow pods and other chaff away from the seeds. Here we've set up a small fan on a chair and we're pouring seeds and chaff in front of the air current. The dense aerodynamic seeds are falling straight down while the lighter pods are being blown away. Start on a low fan speed. If chaff isn't being blown away, either crank up the fan or pour the bucket out a little closer to it. The process isn't perfect. Notice some seeds miss the bucket and there's a pod filled with seeds that's inside the bucket, uh, but it only took about five minutes of threshing and winnowing to get seed that is quite clean. 
Alternatively, leaf blowers can be used to blow chaff away from thresh seeds in a wheelbarrow or on a tarp. Once the seeds have been cleaned of chaff, they may need to dry out of direct sunlight in a place with a bit of airflow. Seeds are dry enough for storage when a sample shatters rather than smushes under pressure. In this photo, we struck peas with a hammer. The seeds on the left shattered while the seeds in the middle still had quite a bit of moisture, too much for winter storage. Peas and beans stored with too much moisture will likely mold uh, before summer. Seeds should be stored somewhere cool, dry, and dark, then planted within the next few years or shared with friends and neighbors. As always, we encourage everyone to offer seeds through our seed exchange at exchange.seedsavers.org. Check our site also for more seed saving resources and rare seeds saved and shared by other gardeners. Thanks very much for watching.